The Self-Tape Checklist. Hi everyone, I'm Matthew Cornwall with Get Taped here in Atlanta, Georgia, one of Atlanta's original audition taping services, which I co-own with my amazingly talented, beautiful wife and best friend, Brooke. Looking fancy on my new iPhone. And now, on to our topic. The Self-Tape Checklist. We've covered various elements of this checklist in past videos on this channel, but I thought it would be a good idea to summarize all of them in one video. And whether you're taping at home or at a taping service like Get Taped, all of these following points will still apply. So let's jump in. The first thing you should do when you get an audition notice, assuming it's a C-mail through Actors Access, is to immediately, the moment you see this email, go straight to your account, upload any submission notes that they require, an NDA if they have one, and your demo reel if you plan on submitting it. Do not wait until the last moment to do these steps because you'll be frantically scrambling to, to, to finish these steps and you might miss something and if you're pushing the deadline already, it's just going to increase your stress level. So do yourself a favor and do it at the beginning. Next, sear that submission deadline into your brain. Put it on the calendar. Do whatever you need to do and then start to map out when you're going to prepare and when you're going to tape. Now, a lot of actors will ask the question, how early should I be aiming to get my submission in? If it's a five day window, should I get it in on day one, two, three, four, five? Well, most casting directors will say, don't wait to the last minute. But is there a magic time that you need to submit? Mm, no, but it's an equation that each actor needs to solve for themselves based on the material and their own preparation. And that is to be as fast as possible but still be as fully prepared as you possibly can. And now that you have your schedule mapped out, start to read the instructions very carefully. Identify the labeling instructions, the slate instructions, the taping instructions. If you're the printed out type of person, then print out your C-mail and highlight all of this information so that when you are going to a taping service, like get taped, or whether you're just doing it at home three days from now, you won't be scrambling to find that that information at the last second. You'll have it right there highlighted for yourself. And if you're not the printed out person and you want to save a tree, well then just make sure you know exactly where that information is on a moment's notice. Don't get to your taping service and be like, oh, I think there's some slate instructions. I can't remember. Oh, hold on. Let me try to log into my actor's access. Oh, I don't get service in here. Oh, now I'm going to have to go out to my car or get on somebody's Wi-Fi. Have all of that information at hand at a moment's notice so that you're not scrambling at the last second. Now it's time to get into the actual craft. Print out your sides, or if you have software that allows you to highlight your lines, then yeah, save a tree and do that. Whatever your method, this is where you wanna to start to go into your script analysis and your character analysis. I will note here though, that remember that a casting director cannot ask you to memorize your dialogue unless they wanna be on the hook for paying you. So even though as part of your prep, you should be trying to get these lines, this character into your bones from your head to your feet, you should not be overly concerning yourself with being word perfect. And if they ask for word perfect, again, that's not necessarily requiring that you memorize, then feel free to hold your script for reference through your audition, especially if it's three pages or six pages. Now, if it's one line, well, for crying out loud, memorize it. Just saying. Choose a wardrobe that suggests your character without going crazy. If you are a doctor, okay, then go ahead and wear your white lab coat. But don't put a stethoscope around your neck. Don't put a name tag that says your name. And don't put that little weird reflector on your head. That's not going to book you the role. In fact, it could do the opposite, which is make the cast director roll their eyes before they ever even watch your video. But dress to suggest the character. Pro tip, make sure that the color of shirt that you decide to wear does not blend in with your backdrop. If you're taping at home, this should be easy to figure out. If you're going to a taping service, ask for a sample of their backdrop color so that you can make sure that you don't pick the exact same color. Now, if you do have a home setup and your backdrop is a common color that you have in your wardrobe, if you have a backlight, also known as a hair light or a rim light, it will help to separate you from that background so that the colors aren't so obviously the same. And if you want to know more about backlights, hair lights, rim lights, Google it. Another thing you want to do at this point is to decide whether you're going to sit or stand in your scene or 
scenes. Now, some teachers will say, don't ever sit in your auditions because it takes away energy. I understand that, but if the actual scene on the day is going to be shot in a seated position, then I see no harm in auditioning that way. But just make these choices ahead of time. That way, when you're rehearsing, you can kind of get a sense for, for what it's going to feel like in the room. And one caveat is rehearse it standing up. Rehearse it with that extra energy. But then as you get closer and closer to performance time, start to choose whether you're going to be seated or standing for the audition. Another thing that's good to do at this stage before it's game time and you're actually rolling the camera is to work out your eye lines. Sometimes it's simple because there's only one other character, so you're going to look right to the left or right of the camera. Sometimes there are two eye lines, and you want to establish that ahead of time and get some practice figuring out where in space you're going to look for that second eye line. Now, when there's three, four, five, six other characters in the scene, this is where you can do the work to simplify how many eye lines you truly need to convey this scene appropriately. Hint, it's never six eye lines. You can usually narrow this down and simplify to two eye lines, sometimes even just one eye line. The bottom line is that if it distracts you and if it takes you out of the scene, you probably shouldn't be doing it and you should just simplify even further. Closely related to eye lines is figuring out stage directions. Read them all, of course, and digest what the author was going for with the scene, but then decide for yourself what is actually necessary in this scene. Clearly, with the limitations of your space, you won't be able to do a lot of the physicality that might be in the audition sides. So come up with solutions and alternatives that still convey the emotion of the scene, because that's key. But don't worry so much about the physicality, especially when it comes to intimacy or uh, a physical fight. Uh, a lot of times that stuff is not necessary to show in the audition. You just need to find some sort of simple alternative that, again, still conveys the emotion and the intent of your character without going crazy. And now that you've done a lot of your character analysis and script analysis and you've made choices about your character, just make sure you rehearse this scene several times to get a feel for the flow. And this is before you worry about setting up the space at home or before you get to get taped or some other taping service. Now, if you can rehearse your scene with another actor, that is great. Even better if that's going to be your actual reader on the day. Sometimes, if you're going to a taping service, it'll just be another actor friend. But what you just don't want to happen is when you show up to get taped or when you are finally set up at home to do your audition, you don't want that to be the first time you are saying these words out loud. And you don't want it to be the first time you're hearing the reader's words said to you out loud. Now, when it is game day and you're ready to shoot the darn thing, a lot, plenty of time to set up your home space or to get to get taped or whatever taping service you might be going to, so that you're not stressed out trying to get things set up or driving to that taping service and, and realizing, oh no, traffic is worse than I thought, or I need to stop and get gas, etc. Because you need time to decompress before you step into that holiest of holy places that is your audition space. You don't wanna carry all of that struggle from all of that prep and all of that setting up into the audition. You need time to, to let that go and to be ready to just have fun. Yes, just have fun. That is presumably why you love acting is because it's fun. That's why in theater they call them plays because this should feel like play. It should remind you of being a child when you were playing in the sandbox and all you needed was a stick and a rock and your imagination. And of all these tips, I would have to say that is the biggest one because it's the one we see actors forgetting about the most at Get Taped, which is having fun. Closely related to the previous point, once you think you have gotten the take, try doing another take, literally for fun. And I mean to change the point of view, change the tone, change the pacing, change your accent. It's like a really bad Sean Connery. Whatever it is you choose to do to explore this different fun take, it'll be a reminder to keep playing, to keep having fun. But you also might discover something about the scene that makes you want to do it again the normal way, but with this added uh, twist, this added element, this added layer that you discovered. And even if you don't find anything that you want to inject back into your performance, well, then it'll give you more confidence that the one you did before 
is the take and you'll walk away feeling that much more confident and by having a little bit of fun you won't be so stressed out and serious after your audition and you might actually remind yourself that this is fun this isn't a chore you shouldn't hate what you're going to be doing most of your career which is auditioning find the fun and a note about slates piggybacking off of these previous two points have fun in your slates and i don't mean to disregard the taping instructions and to say or do something weird i just mean try not to look like a serial killer or someone in a prison lineup or a 10 year old at a spelling bee matthew cornwell six foot two just relax have fun be yourself okay so now you're done you have your tape you know which take you're uploading please double check your submission instructions at this point make sure that you know whether all of the scenes should be in one file or separate files should the slate be separate or should it be attached at the end at the front of your audition how do you label those files again if you refer back to that earlier note you should have the stuff readily available either in a printed form highlighted or in some other way that you don't have to go searching for it at this last stage. And once you do, upload, submit, and feel good. Look, you're gonna be self-taping a lot, especially if you live in the Southeast US. Almost 100% of your TV and film auditions are going to be self-tapes. And even if you're from LA or New York, there's still gonna be a fair percentage of these even as we move forward. And so you need to get used to this process. You need to accept this process this process shouldn't cause resentment and anger in you you need to be at peace with it and possibly even enjoy it at some point imagine that so learn how to relax after you've hit that final submission button and finally rinse and repeat so hopefully all those points make you feel just a little bit better about the self-tape process i'm sure some of those points might raise additional questions if so drop a comment below that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on set.